Hi, I'm Michael Killen. I've been spending a tremendous amount of time with the scientists who have been studying the threat of climate change. And when I leave them and I think about what they say and how they feel, I get the clear impression they all know they are losing the battle. And I never hear them come up with any solution for saving the planet. And in listening to them, I get the feeling that if the rate of warming continues to increase, that in about 20 years, some things may happen and there may be no return. You know, it may lead to the end of civilization. And I, I felt so strongly about this that some of you may or know two or three years ago, I actually made a painting, the beginning after the end. Tonight, on this show, I have a man, a guest who has studied the solution. And his name is Tony Sipa. He's an educator from Stanford University. He is a consultant. He speaks around the world. And he's also written a book that lays out ideas that will be extremely helpful for you and me, for our grandchildren, and the rest of the unborn. Tony Sipa, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for being a guest on the show. My pleasure. Thank what'd you. you what do you think of that introduction? Did that set you up? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that we're going to solve the climate change and also the energy problem uh, and uh, if we do the right things. And uh, I think that the solutions are clear. We just need to execute on them. Okay. Can I just ask you, yes. before the solution, put in perspective what the fundamental problem is. Um, energy is a $7 trillion industry. It's the largest industry in the world. Uh, most of the energy that the world uses today comes from fossil fuels, coal, oil, uh, plus uh, nuclear. Uh, so those make up most of the energy we use. Uh, and of course, uh, fossil fuels are uh, terrible in terms of pollution, and in terms of uh, the environmental uh, damage that, that they cause. Sure. Uh, the yeah. Fossil fuels are certainly helping us, but they are also killing us, they, aren't they? Fossil fuel, uh, energy is the most important issue in the world, period, right now, because uh, everything, most everything that we do uh, as a society is based on how we use energy. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, water uh, is very linked with energy. You need energy to get water, uh, to pump water, to transport water. 20% of the water of the energy we use in California is to transport water, clean water. Uh, and then you need water to make energy. Uh, you need water and energy to make food. Uh, so all these issues are related. You need cheap, abundant energy to have a big economy. Uh, and energy choices depend, uh, uh, so poverty, war, terrorism, all these issues revolve around energy choices. Good. Now, did you say energy is a $7 trillion yeah. business? Yes, a year. That's globally? Yes, that's globally. And it's going up. It's going up. Yeah. And 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, how big do you forecast? Yeah, so energy demand is expected to at least double from uh, now to 2050, maybe triple, uh, depending on how we do energy efficiency. If we do energy efficiency well, 40, 50 percent uh, more energy efficiency than, than we do now, then we're going to grow from uh, 14 terawatt today, which is 14 trillion watts, to about 30 trillion watts. Uh, and that's a conservative estimate. We may do more than that. So we're going to be more than double. So that's a global number. Global number. So yeah. we could be going up to 30 yeah. terawatts. Watt. Yes. That's mm -hmm. a big yeah. number. Yes. And as things are progressing now, mm -hmm. that means the burning of a tremendous amount of oil, if it yes. lasts that long, Yes. and coal. Yes and maybe some other uh, yeah. sources. Let me give you a big number. Um, if uh, at 2007 prices, if we double energy as expected over the next 40 years, 
the energy industry will make $382 trillion over the next 40 years. That's a big number. The U.S. Uh, produces about $13 trillion a year, the whole GDP, gross domestic product. Okay, so the gross domestic product stayed the same right now, just, yes. just, just as a measure. Yes. Energy will go, be, become greater than our gross domestic product, just to keep that in perspective, yeah. and that's a big number, to about $308 trillion dollars. That's the sum of all the revenues over the next 40 years uh, of the energy industry. It'll be 14, 16 trillion dollars in 2050. All right, now, and, and I don't know if you're going to argue with me on this, but it seems to me oil <clears throat> is finite, but I also do know there's oil that that's out there that we don't know about, but mm -hmm. that it's hard to get at and more expensive to get. And the same is true with coal. Yes. But it's finite. You cannot make oil again. I mean, it's the oil we're using today was made 20, 30, 40, 50,000 years ago. These things are basically finite. So, and population explodes, needs explode, increase. So, the price of these energy sources has to go up. Am I wrong? I agree with the fact that coal and oil are finite. Uh, I don't necessarily agree that we have reached peak oil. Uh, there is a lot of oil in the world, uh, but uh, it's becoming more and more dangerous to get it, dangerous in two ways. We need to go into more dangerous countries that don't necessarily like us to go get it, or we need to go offshore into deeper and deeper and deeper territory and drill two miles down and one mile down, and that becomes dangerous, okay. as the Gulf of Mexico spill has shown. And that drives up the price. And yes, that drives up the price because, for instance, when you uh, uh, drill offshore, you need a minimum price of 70 to 80 dollars a barrel of oil to make that financially viable. That's what it costs. Okay. Well, I get the point. Now, I'm still sort of thinking about our energy requirements yes. out 20, 30, 40, 50 years, yes. okay? And mm -hmm. they, they're increasing considerably. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can't we simply take the same kind of coal-burning power plants? Yes. And just build another one and another one and to meet the needs? We have plenty of coal. Can't we do that? What, what's your thoughts on that? So uh, let me walk through the choices that we have. Um, uh, as we go from 14 to 30, uh, it, we need as many sources of energy as we can. So what I did was look at the research that has come out of uh, MIT, Stanford, uh, California Institute of Technology, Department of Energy, and so on. Um, and I added up all the choices. Uh, wind, I love wind, it's clean, uh, it's financially viable. Uh, but going forward, wind has a very low ceiling, maybe one, maybe two terawatt max uh, out of the 30. Uh, so wind is not going to become more than, say, 10%. All right. uh, nuclear energy has a lot of problems, especially that it's not financially viable. It never has been. Uh, nuclear energy needs massive subsidies from the government to make it happen. Uh, but even so, even if we double the current uh, capacity of, of nukes, that's about a, a terawatt. That's 3% of what we're going to need in, in 40 years. If you go through all those choices that we need to make, uh, at the end, you only have two energy sources that can scale to the point of supplying world demand in 40 years. What are they? Coal is one. Coal. We have a lot of coal. And solar energy. Solar energy. Solar energy. Okay. And of course, you know, coal is, is 